welcome you to the house of the Lord today. I trust you had a wonderful week and it's such a joy to see you in church. We want to start our service today by going to the Lord in prayer and I invite you to join me as we pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you this morning for the privilege that we have to be in your house. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness toward us. And Lord, I'm reminded the Bible says the Lord is good. He is a refuge in a time of storm, and he knows those who trust in him. And I thank you, Lord, this morning for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for this Sabbath day and the privilege that we have to worship you. And Lord, I thank you for these men that are going to be baptized today, testifying of the grace of God and how you have touched their life. And I pray your blessings upon them today. And Lord, we pray for the worship service that you would, Lord, tabernacle amongst us. And Lord, may we feel your spirit moving in our midst today. And Father, again, thank you for the privilege that we have today to worship you. And we make our prayer in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. We have coming this morning for baptism, Daryl Robinson. Daryl and his wife, Linda, have been attending Eastside for a number of months, probably a year. Uh, Daryl, some time ago, gave his heart to Jesus, and he comes today on his profession of faith, and we rejoice with him today. Daryl, let me ask you, in whom have you placed your faith to save you from your sins? Jesus. Because of your profession of faith in him, and in obedience to our Lord's command, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. coming this morning, Tim Holt. Timothy was saved in our youth ministry a couple of weeks ago, and he came this past week decide, uh, d d d wanting to be baptized and follow the Lord in, in uh, obedience and baptism, and we rejoice with Tim and the decision he has made to follow Christ. And so, Tim, let me ask you the same question. In whom have you placed your faith to save you from your sins? Jesus because of your profession of faith in him and in obedience to our Lord's command, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you this morning for the troubling of the baptismal waters. Thank you for these two men who have followed you and give testimony of knowing you. I pray your blessings on them and their families. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen them and help them to grow in your grace and knowledge. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother Allen, you come and lead us. ask you to stand with us while the choir is coming back up for our first song this morning, our call to worship. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Seek like never before Worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me.
standing for our first song, hymn number one, Holy, Holy, Holy. to Eastside Baptist Church. Normally the pastor does that, but I'm sure he's changing as we speak. So this morning I wanted to welcome each of you here. If you are visiting with us, we want to give you an especially warm welcome. Encourage our home folks to reach out and uh, greet people this morning. If you recognize somebody sitting close to you or even across the way, be intentional in uh, touching base with them before they leave so that they will know how much we enjoyed their fellowship and appreciate their attendance here today. Also, if you're visiting with us for the first time, if you'll look in your bulletins, You'll see a tear-off portion that you can tear off right here. Fill that out and drop it in the offering play when it comes by, and we'd love to have a record of your attendance and your visiting with us this morning so we could follow up with you. At this time, Brother Terry is going to come and lead us in our prayer time this morning. Good morning, family. We have a couple of folks that are announcements I want to make you aware of. One is a, a, a joyful homegoing of Margie Thomas, who celebrated her 100th birthday uh, just recently, and uh, we want to let you know about her funeral will be this Saturday, November 3rd, receiving friends at 10 a.m. and service at 11 a.m. at Liberty Mortuary in Liberty. Also, uh, uh, Sarah Morse is in the hospital, wanted to make you aware of it, and Gene Cantrell is, uh, is uh, having problems with his lungs and sickness, make you aware of that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the young men that came through the waters of baptism this morning, Father. We just uh, take it now upon ourselves to uh, be there for each one of them, to help in discipling of them. We just thank you for them and thank you for their coming to join with us here at East Side, the, the blessing that, that we receive by being a part of their baptism and their Christian lives. Father, we just uh, are so blessed 
we, we see all the young people that we've had come up to the service this morning. We just thank you. We just ask you to continue to bless our Awanas program as it's bringing so many children to our uh, to our doorstep, to our services, to our uh, Wednesday night, uh, and so many folks are participating in teaching the Word of God as we have the opportunity to be able to witness to these young folks in our community. We just ask that you just uh, continue to bless us in this, in this ministry. Uh, continue to bless our uh, bus and van ministry as we go out into the community and, and pick up many of these, these children that wouldn't be able to attend if it not for being able to uh, have transportation. We just Thank you and ask you to keep us safe on the roads, Father. We just ask that you just uh, be with the uh, uh, Morse family and Cantrell family, Father, as, uh, as they've experienced sickness. Uh, uh, we just ask that you just give them a special touch, Father. Father, we ask that you be with uh, uh, Margie Thomas's family uh, as in her home going. Such a delightful lady that was so much a part of East Side for so many years. Uh, Father, we just thank you for what her life meant to so many, so many here, Father. And we just ask that you just be with their family now. Father, we just have many that are sick with uh, flu and uh, colds and different types of ailments as we uh, have the change of season. Father, we just ask that you be with each each one that's experiencing those problems. Father, we ask that you just uh, be with uh, uh, many others that are, that are having tests. Uh, Father, we know that uh, many are awaiting words from different tests, and many of them have had tests in the past few days even. Father, we just ask that you just be with them and comfort them as they, some of them await uh, what the word is on these, on these things that have been done. Some of them have decisions to be made on the results that they've already received, Father. We just ask that you just be with each decision, Father, that, uh, that uh, they might be able to have your wisdom in making those decisions. Father, we just ask that you continue to be with our, our pastor as he ministers to us, as he preaches the word. Father, we're so blessed to have a, a, a man of God like we have that preaches the word gun barrel straight, Father, to us that we are able to receive the word uh, like we are so clearly and boldly. And we just thank you for, for him and what he means to our, our fellowship, Father, as, as uh, we ask you to be with the pastor search committee as they continue to uh, uh, look for the man that you have uh, already picked out for us, Father. We just ask that you just continue just to uh, keep them in step with you, Father, and and searching for, for this man. And we just ask that you just prepare this man and his family as we know that you know already who he is and uh, in his situation, Father. Father, we just ask that you just uh, be, with our, be with our church in the upcoming. We have so many things on the calendar, upcoming events. Father, we just ask that you just be with each person that's participating in these events. Father, we just ask that you just have your hand in each one, each thing that's done here, just glorify your name, Father. We ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Ironically enough, before we sing our next hymn, which is number 166, I understand that 66 is significant for somebody in our congregation today. <laughs> Today's our pastor's birthday. And he's not 166, by the way, it's just 66. Let's stand and sing happy birthday with him. Happy birthday to him before we sing our offertory hymn. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Wayne. Happy birthday to you. I ask you to remain standing and sing our offertory hymn. Hymn number 166 at Calvary. Years I sit in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was through 
This day, this time, you've allowed us to come back to your house to worship God. God, we pay, uh, thank you for the many blessings that you give us every day of our lives, God. We just pray that we'd always be mindful of where those blessings come from. And God, we just pray for the uh, worship service, God. You'd be with uh, Brother Wayne, God, just giving the words that uh, we need to be, that we need to hear to be better Christians, that we can go out and be better witnesses for you. Now as we come to this time of the service where we uh, take up the tithes and offerings, God, we just pray that you'd use them for the furtherment of your kingdom. These things we ask in your name. Amen. 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 Good morning again, and I invite you to open your Bibles today to Luke chapter number 7. Luke chapter number 7, and I want to preach to you today on this thought, the five great powers of life, the five great powers of life. They're identified right here in this text, and I trust you'll be blessed as we study the Word of God together this morning. For those who visit with us, I want to say thank you. I know uh, Daryl and Linda have some family members with them. And we welcome you. I know that um, Tim had some family members. They had to slip out, and, uh, but they're, we, we are grateful for their presence today. And others who visit, thank you for being here, and I trust that you'll be blessed by the service today. As we, uh, as we gather to study the Word, I want you to look there with me to Luke's Gospel, and uh, I trust you'll be blessed as we study this text. Now, I want to just tell you, Brother Allen, I don't feel older. I don't feel older. Um, secondly, I, I want to tell you, I'm a wet preacher this morning. That suit I was wearing up there didn't work today. Now, it always does, but it didn't today. So I'm a wet preacher preaching to you this morning. And uh, thirdly, I want to tell you a story I heard about. A, I was prepared for this sermon, and I read a story that was written by an old preacher, and he said this. He said the preacher was on his deathbed. And he invited the lawyer and the doctor from a certain from that town to come and sit with him as he went on to glory. And so they both came and 
they sitting there, it was dead silence for a while, and finally the doctor spoke up and said, well, I'm just curious, why do you want us to sit with you? And he said, well, I want to be like Jesus. When he was on the cross, he died between two thieves, and I wanted to, I wanted to model Jesus' life. And, uh, but I, I was reading and studying and preparing. An old preacher shared that story as I read uh, commentary about this text. Now, I had nothing to do with the text, but I wanted to share it with you this morning. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord to worship our Savior? And I trust this text will be a blessing to you. And I invite you to stand as we study the Word of God together. Look there with me in verse number 11 of Luke 7. And the Bible says... And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and much people. And when he came nigh unto the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother. She was a widow and much people, and the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, And said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, that is, the open casket. And they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all. And they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up amongst us and that God has visited his people. My prayer this morning is that God will once again visit his people today as we study the word of God. Thank you so much. You may be seated as the choir comes to sing. Yeah. 
this morning to Luke chapter 7. We're going to be studying verses 11 through 18. And the title of the message today, The Five Great Powers of Life. There are those that are seeking power in every direction. I'm reminded that in a few days we'll be having an election in South Carolina and across America, and one party is seeking power over another party. I'm reminded today that there are those that are seeking power in, um, in politics, but not only politics, there are those that are seeking power uh, in economics, and they're trying their best to get ahead. There are those that are seeking power physically. They visit a doctor and they have other doctor's appointments scheduled, and they're wanting to overcome the afflictions that have touched their life. On and on we can go, but there are those that are seeking power in a lot of different directions. As we go to the Word of God this morning, I'm reminded that there were people there in the city of Nain that were struggling, and Jesus came and gave power to them that they did not have. As we look at this text this morning, we are reminded, the, first of all, the scene is a place called Nain. Now, Nain was about five miles from Nazareth. It was about uh, two miles from Endor. You remember, Endor was the place where they had the seance when Samuel was alive, and, the, and they tried to call Samuel's spirit back from the dead. And it was about two miles from Endor, five miles from Nazareth, and there in this small community, small village, there was a funeral procession. There was a young man that had died. And Jesus, with his disciples, came into the gate at Nain. And as Jesus came through one side, he was bringing life. As the funeral procession was coming from the city toward the graveyard, they were toting and bringing death. And there at that gate that day, death and life collided. And I'm grateful to tell you that life won. I'm reminded today that that's still the case, that the Lord Jesus is greater than he that's within the world. The devil, as I shared last week, is peddling death, but the Lord brings life. And if you're here this morning and you do not know Christ, I'm telling you this is a glad day that you can come and meet him in the free pardon of sin. And so as we look at this text, we're reminded that Jesus spoke to that boy that, that casket, there he was in that open casket. He stopped the funeral procession. He laid his hand on that casket, spoke to the young man and his mother, and he said to the mother, don't weep. And then he said to the young man, arise. And the Bible says that dead boy rose up off that open casket and began to speak again. Isn't that good news? Folks, I believe that's a picture of what Jesus does in the human heart. He's, he's able and willing to touch you where you're dead and your trespasses of sin, give you life, and you can rise up and be alive in Him today. There are three times in the Bible that Jesus overcame death. We're reminded in the uh, book of, of John, uh, chapter number 11, the Bible tells us about Lazarus. Lazarus had been dead four days, and Jesus came to the graveside of Lazarus, and he says, he says, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible says Lazarus came up out of that grave. I'm reminded that he went to Jairus' daughter. Jairus' daughter was a 12-year-old girl. She was dead, and Jesus touched her, and she rose up off of that coffin. And then I'm reminded here, a 16-year-old boy, that has died. They're taken to the graveyard. His family's with him. The city's with him. There's weeping. There's great hurt in their life. And Jesus stops them, says to that boy, arise. And he came up off of that, that coffin. I want you to note with me here in this text that sickness and death had visited this woman's home. We don't know what kind of death or what kind of sickness he had, but there had been sickness that had gripped this home and this mother was burying her only son. I can't imagine. I remember in uh, July of 2009, I received that call from Afghanistan that my our son had been in a roadside bomb explosion. And I, I tell you, that was the most horrifying phone call I have ever received in this lifetime. I'm thankful my son did not die. But yet I, I can't imagine the grief and the hurt and the, the anguish that touched this mother's life 
when her only son died and went on to be with the Lord. And so there they were coming to the cemetery. His face was cold. His body was cold. And that day, Jesus gave them life again. And then I'm reminded that there was suffering, not only the scene of the death, but the suffering. We see that there was hurt that was almost unbearable. And the Bible says that this mother was weeping. Folks, I imagine that's the understatement of the morning. Folks, she was grieved. She was hurting. And the Bible says she was weeping because her son had died. And so there was great suffering, but Jesus went up to the weeping mother and said, don't weep, you don't have to weep. I'm telling you, dear mother, you don't have to weep. And then he turned to the boy and he raised him from the dead. Folks, I'm telling you this morning, you may be weeping in your spirit. and You came to the house of God today because there's hurt in your life. And I'm telling you upon the authority of the word of God, you can find help today from the inerrant, infallible and, and, and word of God. And Jesus will meet you at your point of need. There was suffering. And here we see the story. The story is not one of death. The story is one of victory. And folks, listen. This morning, you can be a part of that same victorious life that this boy and this family met that day. I want you to note with me four, four or five things in this text. First of all, in verse number 11, we see the power of death. The Bible says there in verse, or verse number 12, And when they came nigh unto the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother. She was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. I want you to visualize the picture here that this boy was dead. You could look at the young man, and you could see he was stiff. You could look into his face and know that the, the face was cold. You could look at this boy and know that death had exercised its power over him. Folks, I'm telling you today, the Bible declares it is appointed a man once to die. And there's not a one here, if Jesus tarries his coming, that one day will not go to that very experience that this boy experienced. I'm telling you, the Bible says we all are going to die. Let me share with you just several characteristics of this boy's death and the power of death. Notice, first of all, the power of death is universal. There's no one that's going to escape it. Now, there are people that spend millions and millions of dollars trying to overcome their hurt, grief, and, and sickness, but I'm telling you, there's no one that can overcome death's power because it's universal. And, uh, and everyone has a date with death. I have had the responsibility through 40 years of ministry to go to the graveside with many people. Some of them, I, I'm telling you, are, are different. I, I remember doing a funeral over in Spartanburg on one occasion, and the family, I don't know what they were fussing and fighting over, but they took it to the graveyard. And I thought, how sad, how sad. I have done funerals of small children, and that always grips your heart. I've done funerals for dear friends, Brother Dan Logan, I ordained to the ministry. He got cancer a few years ago, and I, I remember preaching Brother Dan's funeral. Man, my heart was heavy because he was a dear friend, my best friend growing up. I was invited a few years ago. He had cancer, and, and I was invited and asked to help with his funeral. On and on I could go, and I've done funerals for young people, and I've done funerals for old people. I've done funerals for fighting people. I've done funerals for grieving people. I'm telling you, death is universal. I don't care how old or how young. The Bible said it is appointed unto man once to die. But not only is death universal, the power of death is overwhelming. You say, what do you mean? Well, the Bible says here in this text that this lady was overcome with grief and she was weeping. I believe she was weeping profusely. Her only son, 
her, her boy, 16 years old, was being toted out of that city toward the graveyard. Now, they didn't bury inside the city. The graveyard was always outside the city gate. And here they were taking that little boy to the graveyard, and his mother was just overwhelmed with grief. She, she, had, she had seen her boy go on to glory. Folks, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter whether... He was young. His youth did not stop death. He was evidently popular with the whole town. This evidently woman was known by the whole... The Bible says the whole city came with her. The whole town was gripped. I don't know how... Maybe it was, a, maybe it was an accident. Maybe... But a whole city went to the funeral, and they were all grieved as they went toward the graveyard. I'm telling you, popularity doesn't stop death. Evidently, they were a pretty well-off family. And I'm telling you, wealth does not stop death. Death is universal, and death was overwhelming. The Bible says they were grieved, and she wept because of her dead boy. But the power of death is also mysterious. It comes at a moment when you least expect it. I know people try to prepare for death, but folks, I'm telling you, that's a hard task. Whether you're young or whether you're old or somewhere in between, we never know when it's coming. We never know how it's coming. We never know the circumstances around it. But the Bible tells us it's appointed and a man wants to die. And here in this text, we see that death was overwhelming. Death was mysterious. But death can be victorious because in this text, that old boy who was dead all of a sudden came to life at the command of Jesus. And the Bible tells us in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. You may be here this morning and you're dead in your sins. You do not know the Savior, but I'm telling you, He loves you, and He died for you, and He can give you victory over the death that's in your soul today. And so first great power of, the, of life is what we see here in this text called death. If you're dead in your sins, I invite you to come to Jesus I invite you to come and trust Him as your Lord and Savior. But look with me in verse 13. Not only do we see the first great power of death, we also see the second great power, and that's life. And when the Lord saw her, He had compassion on her, and He said, Weep not. And He came and touched the bier. They that bare Him stood still, and he said, young man, I say unto you, arise. We see tied up in the life that Jesus gave love. And the second great power of life is that of love. It's seen right here in this text. The widow was weeping because she loved her son. She was grieved to her core because she loved her son. Now, there are many types of love in this world. There's the sexual love, the friendship love. There's the agape love, God's love. Here we see a mother's love. I'm telling you, a mother's love is special. I'm grateful that I had a mom that loved me. And I know that you're here today in many ways, as to what you are because of a mother's love. Love is the underlying power we see here. Now, the Bible says this, faith, hope, and love, these three, but the grace of these what? Love. Here was a mother that demonstrated love for her son in many ways. The love lightened the burden, and you say, well, why, preacher? Because a person... A person was dead, and she had, and, and Jesus had compassion, but the mother was grieved because of her love. But Jesus' love is also seen here because of the compassion that he shared. 
And I want to tell you this morning, if you have people in your life that love you, then you ought to be grateful, amen? If you have a mother, a father, a, a wife, a husband, children, you ought to thank God today that there's someone that loves you. But I'm telling you, there's no one that loves you like Jesus loves you. The Bible says here that Jesus had compassion. That the idea was that his heart was stirred. He, 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 he stopped this funeral procession because he loves. The very core of the life, the very core of the character, the very core of the will of God is love. There's nothing you can do to make God love you more. There's nothing you can do to make God love you less. The Bible tells us that God loves us. And here he had compassion on this young boy because he loved him. You say, preacher, he didn't know him. Oh, yes, he did. He helped form him. He was there in the creation. Jesus knew this boy, he knew everything about him. The Bible says God knows even the hairs upon our head or lack thereof. God knows us. He loves us. And in this text, we see the second great power at work is the fact that not only had death gripped this family, but there was a power greater than death, and it's the love of God. Folks, you may have come to... Church today discouraged in your spirit. There are things going on around you you don't understand. There are things going around you that you just have, you just have questions about. But I'm telling you this morning, there's a greater power than death that, that, that's seen here in this text, and that is the love of God. But there's a third great power. And that is found in verse number 13. That's the power of tears. The Bible says that this mother was weeping, and she wept. And Jesus said, don't weep. The tears in this text evidently moved God toward compassion. He saw her hurt. Have you ever, have you ever seen someone that's just broken, I mean, emotionally the hurt is so deep, it's hard to cope with. Dr. W.A. Criswell, who long, was a longtime pastor of First Baptist Dallas, one of his books, he shares a story about there was this family in his church at First Dallas that had a child to die. He said, I tried every way under the sun to help that family. He said, but I just seemingly couldn't say anything that resonated with this mother that was grieving so badly. And so he said, I called a, a, another lady in our church that had experienced the death of a child about a year earlier. And I said to that lady, would you go visit Miss So-and-so? And, and she said, I'd be honored to. And Dr. Criswell said, I was there when that young mother that had buried her child walked into the house of that mother that was now experiencing that grief. And he said, this, this mother that had experienced that kind of grief didn't say a word. She just walked over and embraced the grieving mother. And they stood there in the middle of that floor weeping together. Dr. Criswell said, I could never understand it. But that mother had experienced it. You ever met someone that was just hurting so deeply that you just, you wanted to reach out to them? Jesus understood that kind of hurt. And the Bible says it moved him to compassion. And there that day, that day, the love of God overcame death because there was compassion, love, that was seen by the Heavenly Father. There, there, there were three times in the Bible that the Bible says Jesus wept. He wept at the grave side of Lazarus. He, he looked over the city of Jerusalem and they were unrepentant. And he said, I, 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 would have, I would have gathered you as a hen gathers her chicks, but you would not. He wept, the Bible says, over Jerusalem. 
There's a third time that he wept in the Garden of, Ge uh, Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus understood tears. He was someone that the Bible has shared with us wept. And when he saw that broken, grieving mother, he had compassion on her, and he stopped that funeral procession. I was reading this week uh, a, a story about Dwight L. Moody. Moody said that when he surrendered the ministry, he, he wanted to learn as much as he could about the way Jesus did ministry. And he said, I got my Bible out and I started studying. I wanted to know how Jesus did a funeral. He said, but to my dismay, I couldn't find it because Jesus always raised him from the dead. I want you to see here the compassion. Folks, I want to tell you, let me, don't miss this. Jesus cares about you. He cares about all the things you're going through, whether they be physical, whether they be financial, whether they be spirit. Jesus cares about you. Don't miss that. There's no one that cares like Jesus. And he saw the hurt of this grieving mother, and he had compassion on her. The Bible says in Psalm 126, verses 5 and 6, He that goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again, bringing his sheaves with him. Robert McShane was a famous Scottish preacher, died of a pretty young age, and... He had built a great church there in Scotland. <clears throat> there was someone came to that church after McShane had died, and he wanted to try to understand what was the secret, the power behind McShane's ministry. And he came to the church and he talked to the janitor. And folks, if you really want to know what's going on in church, it's not always going to come out of the office. There'll be people in the church that know. This guy went and he talked to the custodian, the sexton. He said, I want you to tell me, you served here with McShane for a long time. What was the secret of McShane's ministry? This is what that custodian said to that reporter and that young preacher. He said, the secret of McShane's ministry was the tears. I saw him weep over the souls of men. And those tears were responsible for winning hundreds and thousands of people to Christ. Oh, dear friend, I, I'm so afraid that Southern Baptists may be on the edge, the, bur the, the border of, of losing their burden for souls. How long has it been since you've seen people at the altar weeping over the souls of men? Jesus respects the tears. I told you the story. There was a family in our church in, in Boiling Springs where I pastored for 10 years. And I would see the, the wife and two daughters. They would often come to the altar, and I knew who, who they were praying for. They were praying for their husband, their dad. And after the service was over, there would be spots on the carpet where salty tears had fallen, and they were burdened and grieved over a lost relative. Folks, how long has it been since we've literally wept over the souls of men? Jesus, I believe with all my heart, he, he respects tears. He's moved by the tears as he was this woman. Well, there's a fourth great power. <clears throat> That's the power of prayer, verse 16. It's inferred here. But it says in verse 16, And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God. The, 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 the phraseology there, they glorified God, saying, There's a great prophet who's risen up amongst us. The power of prayer and praise. Folks, I'm telling you, praise moves the hand of God. Praise, that old song was back in the 70s, I believe. It's amazing what praising can do. 
I don't worry when things go wrong. Jesus fills my heart with a song. It's amazing what praising can do. When Jack Taylor wrote that little chorus, it was sung all over America. Folks, I'm telling you, praise and prayer moves the heart and the hand of God. And here the Bible says they all, they all recognized that something great had happened in their midst that day, and they praised God for it. Listen, folks, we ought to be careful to praise God when He does something in your life. We ought to fall on our knees, cry out to heaven, and say, Lord, thank you for what Jesus has done. The power of praise. Oh, folks, listen, God inhabits the praise of His people. But I want to move on. There's one last power that I want want to mention here. We see in this text the power of death, the power of love and life. We see the power of tears. We see the power of praise and prayer. But notice finally, there's one great power that's greater than all of these, and that's the power of Christ power of Christ. The Bible says there, I say unto thee, look there with me, I say in verse 9, uh, I'm sorry, verse number, um, verse number 14, I say unto thee, arise. I say unto thee, arise. I want you to note that Jesus spoke to the dead boy as his mother and multitude of others looked on and revealed his power. That's the power of life that has victory over death. He went many places demonstrating his power, but none greater than here where he touched the dead boy and said, Arise. What a great miracle. But I want to tell you, just as great, is when he touched this old dead boy, and when he touched that old dead boy, when he touched that old dead boy, he touched this old dead boy who was dead in his trespasses and sin, and he said, Arise. Folks, that ought to make a Baptist shout this morning to know that Jesus has power over death. And I'm grateful that one day he touched my soul, changed my life, wrote my name in the Lamb's Book of Life, Folks, I want to tell you today, greater is he that's within us than he that's within this world. And we see in this text a man, a young boy, who was dead, and Jesus said, Arise. The Bible declares that Jesus has all power, and all power, according to Romans, has been given to him. In Romans 10, in verse number 13, he says, says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You're here today in your death and your trespass and sin. All you have to do is kneel before the Heavenly Father, bow your heart and your head and say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner, and Jesus will give you life where there's death. Notice in this text, there is the power of Jesus. I want you to notice in this story, all sorts of emotion. But in the end, there was death coming one way and there was life coming another way and they met at the city gate and life won. Folks, I'm reminded this morning that there was a time in my life that I was dead at 2 o'clock in the morning spiritually. But one day, death met life, and life won. This morning, if you do not know the Lord, I trust that you'll come and give Him your heart. Ask Him to save you from your sins. You're here this morning, there's burdens on your heart. It may not, they may not be as deep as the grief that this woman was experiencing, but nevertheless, there's burdens on your heart. I'm telling you, Jesus honors tears, and he has compassion on those that are hurting. 
And this morning, I invite you to bring that burden to the Lord and leave it there. Come and kneel around an old-fashioned altar and say, God, I want you to help me. I have a need in my life. I'm telling you, Jesus will meet you at your point of need. Then you may be here this morning, and you've been praying and looking for a church home, and you believe this is where God's leading you. I invite you to come. We open the doors of the church any way that Baptists receive members. I'm grateful this morning that we have life in Him, and we can celebrate that life. And as God's speaking to your heart today, I want to encourage you, obey Him, come and do business with the Heavenly Father. Let's stand together. Brother Allen and the music team is going to come and lead us in the invitation hymn. As God speaks to your heart, would you say yes to Him? Come and be saved. Come rededicate your life. Come and join the church for church membership. Whatever needs in your life today, would you bring it to Jesus? Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee. Of God I come, I come, just as I am, and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blood. blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings within and fears without, O oh, Lamb of God, I come. I'm going to ask him to introduce his family that's come to join him in this special day. And uh, I'm, what did I say? Alan. Alan, what did I say? Did I say? Daryl. Daryl. My name is Wayne. What's your name? Let me give you this certificate. This certificate of baptism certifies that Daryl Robinson was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit on 28th day of October. 2018. God bless you, my friend. Uh, who, who's with you today? My wife and daughter and her husband and kids. And God bless you. Good. Good to have y'all with us today. Thank you. All right, before we go, are there any announcements that we need to share? Let me remind you two or three things, and I'll get back up here with enough. Quit burning. All right. First of all, <clears throat> be here tonight, 6 o'clock. We'll be preaching from the 24th book, uh, chapter of the book of Acts, 24th chapter of Acts. So be here tonight, 6 o'clock, so we worship the Lord again. And then next Sunday morning, we are going to be receiving the shoe boxes. You took boxes. And I, Glenda, where are you? How many boxes? Do you know how many is out?
Amen. That's wonderful. So if you took a shoe box and those boxes would be filled and um, shipped all over the world. Matter of fact, you can get a, it cost you postage to track it, but you can track where your box goes. Alan served 20 years in, in uh, China. Those were blessed, weren't they? They were well received. A, a friend of mine passed, um, was a missionary for 30 years in, um, in um, Guatemala. And um, he, he told me, he said, man, it was just exciting to see those children get those shoe boxes. And in some cases, that's the only Christmas gift they got. And so next Sunday morning, those shoe boxes will be coming back, and then we'll ship them to the, to the, um, the, the distribution point. And, and so that's just an exciting ministry. So if you haven't gotten one, you still can. They're out there on the table. But next Sunday morning, they're due back, and, and Glenda and her team will go through them and then uh, uh, we'll, we'll ship them off. So next, uh, next Sunday morning, okay? Any other announcements? Thank you for being here in the house of the Lord. Bow with me as we pray. Father in heaven, we praise you today for your goodness. Thank you for your word. And Father, I pray that you would help us to hide your word in our heart that we would not sin against God. Dismiss us with your love. Bring us back at the appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray.